Hello. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this uncertain times we're in because um, it's because we've been I've been talking to a lot of our customers from Plantation Villa and uh, my staff here as well. It's been giving me a good insight into how you know um, us in the Western world, including myself who travels a lot, how we see this and then also how the villagers here see this situation. We are certainly in very uncertain times. This started around when it really started to affect our lives, I think, was around early March, especially here at Plantation Lake was starting to affect us. And now we are in like almost coming up to mid-April and we are still, this, there's no better news really. And so I can see that this is kind of causing much confusion with many people bringing up different emotions because every day we are hearing of how many people are affected by this, the virus is spreading, so many deaths a day, um, a situation we are not really used to hearing um, so often. It's affecting all our lives because we're on a worldwide lockdown, which really hasn't happened, uh, at least in my lifetime before. So daily life as we know it has changed and it's uh, what we used to live is becoming a bit of a distant memory as we continue to live in this lockdown. And the way I see it, I think uh, there are main the emotion so one is this seems to be a lot of fear a fear of uh, uncertainty of what is going to happen in the future a fear of sickness a fear of death um, of loved ones or even ourselves if we get this illness what is going to happen um, a fear of loss of income or fear of way of life going forward so there's on the one category i see fear then on another one, there's a lot of stress and frustration and anxiety because we can't, we've lost our freedom, freedom of movement, freedom of doing what we want, getting what we want, because we are in a lockdown. You can only, I don't know, at least here in Sri Lanka, we can only really have access to um, essential foods. So, so there's also this frustration that, that we can't travel anymore, or flights are grounded everywhere, we can't go you know, touring the world. Um, there's frustration because there seems to be a loss of stimulation. We are not really used to being stuck at home for a long time um, in this manner. We are used to waking up, going to the gym, going to work, um, going to our yoga class, going to do this and that, meeting our friends, going to the pub. So this being stuck at home, which seems to be causing a lot of agitation. And then I see um, the villagers here. In Sri Lanka, we've been having curfew now since about mid-March. So it's, it's, I think it's the end of the third week of curfew. So um, everyone is prohibited to, to be out of the house for anything, even to buy groceries. We cannot go out of our houses. And if we do, um, police will ar arrest us. So in this kind of scenario, I still see that in the village, uh, people are not really worried about, or they're not agitated or frustrated because they're not really, they're completely accepting of this loss of control because I think um, the lifestyle here is so in line with nature that they're used to nature controlling. So, because if there are, heavy rains then they can't do certain things if there's at the moment there's almost a drought so so people are used to not being in control so that is not really bothering them but there is fear there's fear of more basic lack of basic necessities so they're worried that there'll be no food already even in our village people are out of food and out of money to obtain food so and I'm thinking at times like this because of my own experiences of the past and what I have learned through my journey of uh, my own self uh, finding myself and um, also running Plantation Villa for around seven years and interacting with people from all over the world, all different walks of life, different age groups, different social strata, different careers. Um, I have seen that 
really the practice of what we have learned through the the philosophies and disciplines of yoga, Ayurveda and Buddhism, this is really the time to practice that. And, and I know including myself, we say we are practicing and I would say I'm practicing if I'm doing my daily yoga practice and if I'm sticking to the diet. But I think this is more than that. And, then, and these times like this really teaches us how much these practices have changed us or not changed us because I would say last year we had in Sri Lanka the Easter attacks and for me there was a lot of fear of what is going to happen to Plantation Villa, the future of Plantation Villa, how my staff are going to, to live and I have a responsibility, we have about 30 staff here and their families and the village and and I, from that incident I learned a lot and I um, realized that even though I have been practicing, perhaps I need to go one level deeper. And maybe that's why this time I'm feeling much calmer. And what I learned from my experience last year, and I have been practicing it now too, is that we need to see, there are ways that the philosophies teach us how to handle these situations or how to live basically. And one is to live in the present moment because this fear and anxiety, a lot of it comes from when we relate to the future. And the future depends on how we act today, because really the future is just our imagination, because it's, it's not real. What's real is what this moment that we have. So, so it's really to live in the present moment. And, and I would say, even if we are locked up in the house, even if I'm here at Plantation Villa, we don't have any guests now, so, and we are in a curfew situation, the flights have grounded, so guests can't come to us even though they want to. And here I am not being able to even go out of our estate. But as long as I have food and water and, and, I can, and I'm alive and I have my health, and then I, I have learned to be grateful to that. So I think this is one of the things that we need to focus on, to be grateful for what we have, because I can see that just down the road, there are people without food. And we are working on this. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we went to donate uh, um, herbal medicines to the army and all the frontline uh, services who are there protecting the country, protecting the people and guiding the people. So. And I'm grateful that I'm not there. I'm actually in the safe haven of my home and of, of this place um, in nature. So, so one is to live in the present moment because actually if we have our basic needs met in the present moment, we need to be grateful for that. And then how we act, because if we have gratitude, then the mind is calm and then we can make right decisions and do things in the present moment that will make our future better. But if we are frustrated, if I am frustrated that I cannot travel, to be honest, today is the 9th of April. If all was well, I actually was supposed to be in England now. So if I'm frustrated of what I couldn't do because of this virus situation, then, then I'm going to be frustrated and I'm going to do things uh, now or make decisions now which will actually even make my future not that great and and that would impact the future of all of the people affected by plantation law. so it's important for us to focus on our present moment because what is going to happen in the future we truly don't know um, so so one is this uh, focusing on the present moment the other is what I have learned is to really look for the cause because for whatever happens, there's this cause and effect cycle. It's taught very clearly in Buddhist philosophy and I think in yoga as well. I have read in yoga and Ayurveda where they refer to this. So in Buddhism at least, which I'm very comfortable with the knowledge, is where it talks about Hetu Palavade, which means it's the cause and effect cycle. That everything in this world operates on a cause and effect cycle. So if I am in a certain situation now, then that, that is the effect of a cause that happened before. Then I need to look for the cause of why. 
So if I'm angry now, then I need to look for the cause of why I'm angry. So then we, it's good for us to do that because I've been doing that actually now for a few years, every time something happened, uh, something that I can't understand why it happened or something that I am feeling and an emotion I'm feeling I always try to see what is the cause So in a moment like this if we see like what is the cause of if you are feeling anxious at home if you're feeling uncomfortable Being locked down in your home then then it's important to look at what is that cause behind it Because this is our home is what is our sanctuary and so for me, since I moved to Sri Lanka, this has been my home. So if I'm unhappy being locked down here for a few weeks, then, then there's something not right. Then what is the cause? The cause was that I selected this as my home. You selected where you are as your home. Then perhaps that selection was wrong. So it's important to look back. And then if that was not right, then to really assess what would be right and i'm thinking if i had i not changed my life and ended up uh, with plantation villa i would have been living in canary wharf in london working for the bank locked down in my little apartment in canary wharf by myself and for sure i'd be very unhappy to be locked on lockdown for a couple of weeks or three weeks or whatever but then the cause would be i selected to live there I selected to live alone so perhaps this is where we went wrong so somewhere down the line we got distracted by the modern way of living and we lost path of what truly makes us happy so if you are locked down at your home with your family with your pets um, and you are unhappy and agitated by that then it's important to see what is causing that so when, when you start looking at the cause, you can see what, what is causing this and then think about how we can change it now. It could also mean that because we are so used to getting our mind stimulated by going, doing things. And I know that in the past, my life was just waking up and then you're going to the gym and then to the yoga class and then to work and then at the end of work then you go to the pub with your colleagues and then something else and you know you hardly have any time at home and we are not used to just being there not doing anything so that alone causes agitation because it's the habit of the mind to be constantly busy and and then we thought that being a busy body is a good thing so this is these are important things to reflect on i'm not saying one is right and one is wrong just saying that thinking through these things and really assessing what is happening if I, if you're agitated rather than sitting around blaming the government or blaming the virus or blaming nature or anyone it's important to see what what is it that's within our control which is our mind and our environment and then what is the cause of what i'm feeling now and then how can I work on changing that so that my future is going to be better? That in the future I can be happy because if I'm happy now, then I'm going to do, take decisions and actions that will make me happier in the future. So, and I think if you look at a larger sense of what is the cause of what has happened, perhaps it's the way our species as humans have lived. We, we became unstoppable. We forgot that that we need to live in harmony with nature. We forgot that we are part of nature, that we started to almost live apart from nature, separate us from nature, and then try to control nature in a way that is harmful to every other species and, and ourselves. And this is now, I mean, all science is pro uh, giving indications to this that how humans have destroyed our planet and as a result it is destroying our lives even today i read an article in the times magazine about how it says if you want to avoid pandemics in the future the way to do it is protect wildlife habitat and just the lockdown of the world i mean i'm sure you have seen too that how animals are freely enjoying the beach i mean at least in sri lanka we see wild sambas running around the beach um enjoying the roads and everything it's perhaps this is 
space of theirs that we have taken selfishly for ourselves. I can see even a plantation that just outside our porch, there's much more birds than before. We've always had a lot of birds and it was a, a, a continuous comment that we received from our guests that it's beautiful to have all these bird noises and to see all these birds. But it's been incredible the amount of wildlife that is there now, um, just after two weeks of quietening down at the villa. So I was thinking how much of their habitat we have taken over and you know who said that you, this earth is only there for humans. So it's important to reflect on this stuff and, and perhaps that is the cause for this pandemic and, and this situation today. So what I just wanted to bring some of these to the forefront of your mind because if we use this quiet time then to work on these factors and change our habit patterns, change our thought patterns, um, we can be happier ourselves and then we can create a world that is better, not just for ourselves, but for all of those who we loved and all other beings, not just humans. And I wanted to end with a, um, some words by the Buddha. He said, try to be the bee and not the fly. And um, he described that a bee, even in the most um, ugliest of uh, environments, it will find the one beautiful flower that is there and the most fragrant and most beautiful thing it can spot. And it will go to that flower, take honey from that flower, take nectar from that flower without harming the flower and then Create, use that to create bees honey, which is actually, according to Ayurveda, it's the most nutritious substance on earth at the moment. So it would, so the bee Buddha likened uh, to this animal that is, that is able to take something from its environment, something beautiful, use it to create something that's valuable for not just itself, but to all other species. So let's try to be the bee and not the fly who Buddha said, even in the most beautiful flower garden, it can go. It will, it will only spot the pile of garbage or the pile of shit that is there. And it will go there, eat what it wants. Um, and then every other place it goes to and lay, it will contaminate that, that space. So it's actually, um, not really helping anyone or itself so and I thought I will end with that so let's try to be the bee let's try to take this gracious gift that nature is giving us but not by harming it but uh, and then create something better we are such an intelligent species we can do so much to help each other including other animals so let's let's try to be that um, I hope you all are all staying safe and happy. Um, look after your health. Um, this is a, it's a good time to focus on yourself, on your physical and mental health. Um, my doctors constantly keep saying how fear, agitation all reduces the immune system. And this is the time we need our immune system at its full blast. So focus on yourself. We have many other talks on our channel, so please watch them. And if you have any questions, we are always here for you. I'm sorry we can't be with you in person and I'm sorry you cannot be here with us, but I'm sure when this ends, we can meet again. And, but until then, we are here by phone or by internet. Thank you very much. <laughs>